Hi Year 5, it's Miss Perry here. I hope you're all well and I'm sure that you're working hard at home. This video is going to look at the Year 5 Geometry Task 7 and 8 and during this video we're going to be looking at this learning question. Can I read and plot read and plot coordinates in all four quadrants? We've got some vocabulary here. We have coordinates, position, axis, horizontal, vertical, read, plot, brackets, quadrant and origin. So you'll also look at this when you come into year six, so it's good that we're covering it now in year five. If you can already do this, then brilliant, but if you want some help, just keep watching. You may remember in year four, when you were looking at coordinates, you looked at a grid that looks something like this. We have a horizontal axis here that goes across and we have a vertical axis here that goes up and down. Can you remember the names for each axis? So the horizontal axis that goes across, that's easy to remember, it's the X axis. So if we just label that and it's easy to remember because it goes across the X axis. The vertical axis is called the Y axis. Okay, now each axis at the moment you can see starts with a zero. This point has a special name and I've marked it here. It's called the origin and it's also here. Okay, so what is a coordinate? A coordinate is simply a pair, so two numbers that describe a position or a location on a grid or on a graph. There are just a few rules that you need to have remembered from year four. So the two numbers are placed inside a pair of brackets, inside brackets. So we have a bracket and another bracket and we have a comma in between. Why do we use two numbers? Well, because we have an X axis and we have a Y axis. The first number that goes here will tell us the position on the X axis. So how many across is the coordinate, is the position? So um, if we just record that in there, so that will be the X axis number. The second number in the coordinate will give us how many up or down it is. So that's on the Y axis, the Y axis. It's very important that we always give the X axis number first. If you don't, then it will go wrong. So let's just look at an example. Imagine I've asked two children, Jasmine and Khadija, to plot, which means just to draw or mark the position described by the coordinate, two, seven, two, seven. Okay, so you can see Jasmine thinks 2, 7 is here. However, Khadija thinks 2, 7 is here. So who is correct or are they both incorrect? Now, if you remember what we said earlier, then we said that we need to use the x-axis number first. So if we look, the, the x-axis is a 2. So that tells us how many across. OK, and then the Y axis number is a seven and that tells us how many up. So if we look at that, we can see two across on the X axis, two and then seven up and they meet at that point there. So we can see that Jasmine was correct. However, Khadija, she's actually pl uh, plotted the position seven, seven across and two up. So she's plotted the coordinate seven, two. So Khadija has used the same two numbers, but she's got them the opposite way around. And that has given us a totally different position on the grid. So I'm afraid Khadija in this case got it wrong. So if you look, you can see that I've plotted some letters A to F, A to F. Um, so now I'm going to read and record the positions of these coordinates. If you want to have a try first, then all you have to do is just pause the video and have a go. So firstly, if we look at position A, so remembering to give the X axis number first, we can see that we have from zero one 
across. So we put the brackets in, so we have one. Then the comma, okay, so one, and then it is five for the y-axis. So the, the coordinate for A is one, five. Okay, now if we do the others, B, so how many across on the x-axis? It's three, and how many up? Well, it's three, so three, three. If we look at C, we can see on the x-axis, it's one. And then if we look at the uh, y-axis going up, the vertical axis, it's also one. And then D, now this one is a bit more tricky. So you can see how many across is it? It's six, so that's our x number. And how many up is it? Well, zero. And then if we look at E, we just find where E is. E is located here. So it's six across and four up. So the coordinates are six, four. Okay, and the next one, F, the last one, F is up here. So how many across is it? Well, zero. It's on the zero mark on the X axis. How many up is it? It's six. Okay. So now that we've read some coordinates, let's, I'm just going to show you how to plot some. Again, if you want to just pause the video and have a go at plotting, so marking on the coordinates grid where these coordinates would be. So if we look at position G, position G is 3, 6. So always the X axis number first, 3, and then 6. So it's going to be there. And if we just plot that and then put G. Okay, if we go to H, we've got zero across. So that's going to be here, going to be there, and five up. So H will be there. And then if we look at I, seven across and four up. So if I just plot that, I will be there. And J, three, three across and zero up. So J would be there. Okay, so that's just a quick revision of coordinates from year four. And now we're going to extend this. Okay, so you can see now we still have the horizontal X axis and we still have the vertical Y axis. However, you will know from the work you've already completed in year five that number lines numbers when counting backwards do not stop at zero. What do we call numbers that are less than zero, that are smaller than zero? We call them negative numbers. So if we count backwards on the x-axis, we have five, four, three, two, one, zero, and then we just put in negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, and negative five. So if we again do the same thing on the y-axis, five, four, three, two, one, zero, we're gonna have negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, and lastly, negative five. Obviously, if this grid was bigger, the numbers would, the numbers would extend even more. So our, you can see that our coordinates grid is now divided up into four sections, one, two, three, Four. So these are what we call our four quadrants. So if you think back to the learning question right at the start, it mentioned being able to read and plot coordinates in all four quadrants. And these are the four quadrants. So quad, there's a clue there, quad means four. So if you think about a quadrilateral from your other geometry work, a four-sided 2D shape, or you might want to think of a quad bike, a bike with four wheels. The quadrant you learned in year four, you learned about in year four, is this one here, and it's called the first quadrant. So if we just mark that in, the first quadrant. Then as we move around anti-clockwise, here we have the second quadrant, and the third quadrant quadrant would be here and then finally we have the fourth quadrant. 
Okay, so you can see I've already plotted some positions and I'm now going to show you how to read these coordinates in the four quadrants. So we use the same rule exactly as before. Remember that the x-axis number, how many across, comes first before how many up or down. So if we look at A, A is in the first quadrant and its coordinates, the coordinates of A are 3, so if we went up, 3, 2, 3, 2. So if I just record that with our brackets and our comma in between. So if we repeat, repeat that for the others, B is also in the first quadrant and it's 1 across, 1, 4. So let's just record that. Now, C is in a different quadrant. C is in the second quadrant. So we can see there that how many across? Well, this time we're into our negative side of our X axis. So it's negative four, comma, and how many up? One. Okay, D, now D again is be careful with the ones that have zeros in them because they can be a little bit more tricky. So how many across? You can see it's negative 2. How many up on the y-axis? 0. Okay, so if we go to E, again, now we've moved into the third quadrant, the third quadrant. So it's negative 3. And then on the y-axis, we can see that it's negative 2. So negative 3, negative 2. Okay, then F. F is here, so how many across is it? Well, it's on this line here, so we can see it's zero for the x-axis, and for the y-axis, we can see that it is negative three. Okay, now we're moving into the fourth quadrant for G. So how many across? It's two across. How many up or down from the zero? We're looking at negative one. And then finally, H. Again, we're on the same line as G, so it's going to have the same uh, x-axis coordinate number. So we have 2, and how many up or down is it? It's negative 4. Okay, now, the coordinates in the first quadrant will be positive numbers. So they will be a positive, positive. You will see no negative in these numbers here. If we look in the second quadrant... We can see that it will be a negative number first and then a positive number. And then if we go to the third quadrant, then both the numbers, if we look at E, E is in the third quadrant, both of the numbers are going to have a negative sign in front of them. They're both going to be negative. And then finally, in the fourth quadrant, we can see here the G and the H. So in the G and the H, we'll have a positive for the X and we'll have a negative for the y. So if we look at g, we've got positive, so positive 2, 2, and then we have the negative 1. Okay, now if we look at the next task, so that was reading, let's just go to plotting now. So if I go to i, we've got to plot i to n, all these positions. So i, firstly, how many across is it? It's negative 4, so it's going to be somewhere on this line. And then we can see that it's 3 up. So negative 4, 3, so it's going to be there. And if I just put the letter next to it, I, and then I might tick it just to say that I've done it. J, now J is 2 across, 2 on the x-axis, and negative 2 on the y. So J is going to be there. Okay, if we look at the next one, K, so negative 3 and then 4. So they meet at that point there. So we've got K. And then L, now L is 1, 1 across on the 0 for the Y. So it's going to be there. So we need to put L in there. And then M, minus, so negative 4, negative 4. And then zero up. So it's going to be there. M is going to be there. Okay. And then N is five. Five. So it's a positive number, but it's a negative number for the Y. So it's going to be here. So negative four. So there we have N. Okay. Now 
let's just have a quick look at the activities that are actually in your pack. So first what you can see is you have some useful websites, some of them have games on there that you might want to play and then we've got some information here that just repeats what we've already just gone through. So the first activity that you're being asked to do for Geometry Task 7 is here and it's quite straightforward. All you have to do is to read and record the coordinates. So you find A and then you just jot down the coordinates for A. Okay, so the next activity is this one. And you can see here that this one is a little bit more tricky because what you have to do is plot the coordinates but then you have to join them up and you must join them up in order using a ruler. So if you just have a quick look at this one, the first coordinate is four, six, four, six. So it's going to be there. Then I'm going to tick it off uh, or you can cross it off, whatever you want to do, four, six. Do check in case you make a mistake. And then the next position is one, one. So I'm going to plot that. Now I've done two, what I need to do is just join them up with a ruler. So I'm going to join them up. So from the first one to the second one. The next position, the next coordinate is six, six, four. So that's going to be six, four. And I'm just going to check because it's quite a small grid. Six, four. And then we need to join from the last one we did to the one we've just done. And you keep going like that until you've finished and plotted all the coordinates and joined them up. Okay, the last activity is a fun activity where you have to decode the hidden message. So find whichever letter is at these coordinates, just write it down above and you'll get a hidden message. So if you have any questions, then I've just included the year five uh, the e email address. So if you have any, just please email this address using this address and somebody from the year five team will get back to you. Hope that's helpful. Take care.